Hi, my name is Emily Moravik, and we're going to learn about galaxy evolution. At some point in your life, you may have looked up at the night sky and seen the lane of milky white that goes across the sky. This is the dust, gas, and stars of our own Milky Way galaxy. There are billions of other galaxies out there and we're not alone. Galaxies change and evolve throughout time just like living things here on Earth. Thanks to computer simulations, we have a general idea how galaxies form and evolve and change throughout time. From these simulations, we think that smaller clumps come together to form larger clumps endlessly until a galaxy is formed. But this is our theory, so how do we observe this? Well, you can't just watch one galaxy evolve throughout time because galaxies work on the cosmic time scale of millions to billions of years. So even as an entire human race, we can't watch the life of one galaxy unfold. So instead, we study different stages of the lifetime of a galaxy and piece it all together. Kind of like if you were looking at an old cosmic scrapbook and looking at all the pictures throughout time. So to do this, we use the physics principle that light travels at a finite speed. So the further away something is, the farther back in time you are looking. For example, the sun is eight light minutes away. So it takes light eight minutes to travel from the sun to us. Saturn is 90 light minutes away. And the next closest star is four light years away. And the closest galaxy, that's Andromeda. And it's 2.5 million light years away. So you're seeing Andromeda as it was 2.5 million years ago. And so we look at galaxies at various distances in order to piece together how galaxies evolve throughout time. There are many galaxies out there and so each astronomer studies a different face. We piece them all together in order to understand galaxy evolution. So I study a phase in which the galaxy becomes extremely active. And we want to understand the structure of this phase in order to understand this phase better in order to understand galaxy evolution better. So we know that there is a black hole at the center of almost every galaxy, and that the black hole and the rest of the galaxy are somehow linked, because we see evidence of them growing together and affecting one another. We want to know exactly how these two components affect one another. So in this case, Renato is going to represent the black hole. Sometimes these black holes become very active in that they begin to eat all the matter around them and then spit it back out, which creates a lot of light. Perfect! The most luminous type of active black holes in galaxies are called quasars. And these quasars are so bright that they look exactly like a star in an image, hence the name quasi-stellar object. For example, in this image here, one of the points of light is a quasar, and one is a star. Can you tell which one is which? No, I can't either, but Google says it's the one here on the left. Think about it like this. If you try to take a picture of your friend who's holding a spotlight pointed right at you, you won't see any of the details of your friend, or most of the image for that matter, because the spot of light is just so darn bright. So, we break the light up in two colors and we look at a plot of the intensity or how bright a color is versus the color or the wavelength called a spectrum. And from spectra, we can actually tell the composition, what the structure of the material is and how fast the material is moving. And all we know about quasars is actually from these graphs called spectra. The word quasar describes the phenomenon happening at the heart of the galaxy. So you have the black hole and then matter that is being pulled in to the black hole because of its extreme gravitational force. And it creates something called an accretion disk. So this is matter that is rotating around the black hole and because of the extreme friction, that is what creates all of the light. So some of this matter also gets blown back into space into these jets. And then some of the matter also gets blown out in something called outflows, which is what I study. They come off like this. And then the last component is something called the dusty torus, which is a circular structure around the whole thing that is dust and gas. And then the rest of the galaxy is all the way over here. 
Remember how I said that we want to understand how the black hole and the rest of the galaxy affect one another and how they're linked? Well, scientists came up with this idea that maybe it's the outflowing material that then links the black hole and the surrounding galaxy. So our group is trying to understand whether this material being blown out can actually reach the rest of the galaxy and blow out the gas in the galaxy and therefore prevent stars from being formed anymore. So it's like a hair dryer blowing away pieces of paper. where are these outflowing materials, what is the structure of them, and what is their kinetic energy. So what did we find? Well, we found that the material outflowing is quite close to the black hole and not all the way out here in the surrounding galaxy. We also found that the structure of these clouds actually are a dense core that is less ionized surrounded by a less dense gas cloud that is more highly ionized. And lastly, we found that the kinetic energy of one of the quasars in our sample is marginally sufficient such that the outflowing material can affect the surrounding galaxy. So in conclusion, we were able to contribute to galaxy evolution by studying quasars and understanding the physical structure and the kinetic energy of these outflowing materials and that they likely have enough kinetic energy to affect the surrounding galaxy. Our work was studying a snapshot of a specific phase of galaxy evolution, and this must be put in context of the whole cosmic scrapbook of galaxy evolution. Think about it like this. If we were aliens studying the human race, one alien couldn't study in detail the entire human race. Each alien scientist and research group would contribute specific pictures at various times of individual humans or a particular town or race of people. One alien group would study the city of Dublin in Ireland, while another group would study the state of Florida. Another group would study children, another college students, another the elderly, and another the details of the entirety of one person's life. To understand the evolution of the human race, they would put all that together with all the diversity mixed in there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how astronomers study galaxy evolution.